Ba-dong. Okay, but what's the difference between these other than like a six dollar price point? Like they're both A3 and they both have 40 slots. What is the difference? And then this is the same price as this one, but this one's studio and this one's professional. The only difference I can feel is a slight thickness difference between them all. Or alternatively, there's just these cardboard ones, which are like 10.55, but then I've got an A2 just in case it's like slightly larger than A3 because I rip all my paper and I'm not, I'm not convinced I'm definitely ripping an A3. Yeah, I'm going to get one of these or cardboard ones because it doesn't even look bad. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad. At some point, I should probably get a drawing board for other life drawing classes. I have a life drawing class coming up in July. Um, I bought a short course, but I reckon I'm just going to use a big, thick piece of cardboard or something. I'm not... Oh, no, I'm not going to... Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not buying it right now. It's not happening. A tangent, and has nothing to do with the portfolio, but if anyone's interested in, like, using toned paper, I definitely recommend the Fabriano ones. I use even watercolours on these, and it holds it just fine. Welcome to my first art school vlog. My name is Misha Stavinsky and I am an artist based in Adelaide, South Australia. Um, in this video I'm going to be putting together a portfolio for an application interview. For those of you who don't know or don't follow me on Instagram, I very recently, <laughs> by recently I mean literally within like the last month, so that can't be more than like two or three weeks because it's currently the 25th. Um, anyway, <laughs> I applied for art school, a Bachelor of Visual Arts at the Adelaide Central School of Art. It's a small private university and I'm hoping that if my application is uh, approved I will get to study part-time. I've actually had to put off my studies for six years. Um, for reference I'm 25 years old and I've been a full-time carer of my three children and they're finally at an age where I feel comfortable leaving them in the care of someone else. My partner will watch from two days a week so I can go study. The classes are from nine to four, so it's a full day. Um, I didn't want to leave them in a daycare for that long, so it was really hard as much as I wanted to study before this to actually find someone to watch from for that long. My name's Lee. If you're new here, I'm a full-time freelance artist. And in this video, we're going to do 
a voiceover where I talk about starting your own YouTube channel. So with these vlogs, I'm really planning on documenting over the course of the three years of The Bachelor, my thoughts, my feelings, how much I progress as an artist, some snippets from class, homework, but also how I'm balancing studying and being a carer because that's something as I mentioned before that was really stopping me from studying earlier despite how much I have wanted to study at a university level all these years like it was one of my biggest aspirations and it was really hard to come to terms with the fact that I couldn't do it as I mentioned I'm going to be working on my portfolio in this video it's a portfolio that I need for the interview because I'm going through the alternative entry stream what that means is is that I didn't have um, an ATAR to enter and an ATAR is pretty much just like the score that you get once you finish school, right? It says that I'm, I don't know, in the 88th percentile best or whatever finishing school. I don't, I don't remember exactly what an ATAR is. It's been that long and I don't miss knowing what an ATAR is if I'm being completely honest, but yeah, I'm 25. So I'm way past that. That's more so for like school leavers. I also don't have any prior higher education as I mentioned earlier. So I have to go through an interview process. And what that entails is that it's going to be like a 25 minute, maybe 30 minute, really casual interview. They'll ask me a few things about my art practice, why I want to study, what I'm hoping to get out of it. And it'll be with the student, I need to remember how to pronounce this word, liaison? Liaison a student liaison officer and two academic staff. Um, I have no idea who the academic staff are going to be until the day when I get to the interview, so that's fun. I don't know if it'll be sculpture, painting, drawing, or art history. So for this portfolio, I have a limit of only 12 artworks that I can show. Spoiler alert, after going through all these artworks that I'm showing on screen right now, culling the portfolio too, I'm still over the limit. Um, but, it, but it's a casual interview, so I'm sure it'll be fine. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think I should be too stressed about it. I want to put in only my strongest pieces. By this, I mean maybe not necessarily the most technically skilled ones, but I think overall, like aesthetically, they're my strongest ones. And they also say the most about me as an artist. And what I'm hoping to really achieve and say with my artwork this interview is like the first impression that the academic staff are going to have of me and I really want it to be a good impression and I want it to be memorable. And I also need to look for artwork that is really showcasing the fact that I am a practicing artist and I do have some background knowledge and I'm not a complete and utter beginner. They're not going to have to really, they're not going to have to like really work with me from the ground up, you know? I want to show that I'm devoted to artwork. So I'm planning on putting in a sketchbook or two as well to show that, that it's something that I do. Not only final pieces, but I also sketch from life. I jot down ideas and notes. Essentially, I just want to show the panel that I don't only draw witches, you know? So my strategy for the portfolio itself is to have a variety of artworks in it. And by this, I mean different subjects, different types of materials, techniques, and also sizes. I want to show that I can do more than just a single thing while still being cohesive across it. I also want to choose pieces that I personally feel like best represent me as an artist, that they best showcase what I want to say with my art and what kind of audience I'm trying to reach with it and my personality. I really want my personality to shine for the artworks that I am putting in the portfolio. I also want to show that I experiment a lot with my artwork and that I don't just do the same thing over and over and over again. I am a firm believer that artists should experiment and be playful and have fun and just create with complete abandon, not worrying about whether or not it fits their personal style. Because here's the thing, everyone has a style, right? You have a visual language and the subjects you go for and whatnot, but it's gonna go through phases. It's gonna go through these sorts of waves when you're in it, when it's changing, it feels like it looks nothing like the rest of your work, right? When you look across the whole timeline of your creating, you realize that it's cohesive. And that's what I want to show, that I make artwork and that I don't worry about it all looking the same and that I am someone who really wants to experiment because I think that that's, I feel like that's an integral part to my art practice, experimenting and playing and just stream of thought creation. Oh, useful. 
Hello and welcome to the news. Allegedly, local woman Misha Stavinsky has put too much into her portfolio. The interviewers asked for 12 artworks and she has put in over 30. Witnesses also say that allegedly she's having a fantastic hair day. Today is a Saturday the... Alright, what's the date? I can't even check my phone because I'm recording on my phone. I think the 24th of June. If Monday's the 26th, then today is indeed the 24th. Anyway, yes, the allegations are true. I've put in more than 12 artworks. I don't know why. I do know why. I am really indecisive and I just wanted to show them everything. And I'm wondering if a sketchbook I could say counts as one piece. Because I've got, okay, but I've also got four sketchbooks in there, so that might be overkill. I don't know. I know I talk more about what I put in here in the voiceover, but then I kept looking at the small pile and I felt like that's not enough. I think I always just feel like it's not enough and like I should be showing a lot more. And the weird thing is, this is my second time interviewing at the same school and I got in the first time. So I don't know why I'm stressing so much the second time when I am a lot better at artwork than I was back in, when would that have been? 2019. And I'm a lot more articulate in my essay. It's much better written. It was pretty, it's pretty good if I do say so myself. But I just keep feeling like I just want to show them more and more to really show that I deserve the spot I'm getting. Which I don't think, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think I'm not, not gonna get it. It's a small private school, so there's not a huge amount of applicants. It's like 30, 15 people per class and there's only like 30 people applying. So I should be fine. Um... <laughs> Or because I'm talking mad smack about it right now, being really confident in a few weeks' time. I'm gonna have to make a really sad thumbnail that says, Didn't get into art school? Why? I was talking to Sean about that actually. She said, But at least it'll get more views if I don't get in. So, <laughs> right side, I guess. Um, But I have today and tomorrow to really iron out the portfolio. I want to show my personality from my artworks. I want to show my technical skill. I was at first really, um, I wanted to grab like pieces that I've done that are studies and stuff, but then I realized there's not much point. I mean, this school works with the assumption that they need to teach you everything. So I don't think I need to show studies. I think I'd be better off showing my personality through it because one of the main things with this interview, I guess that I am stressing about is that this is what they'll like, this is their first impression of me, this is what they'll remember me by. I want it to be artwork that is very memorable, that tells them of who I am as a person, as an artist, because I'm a little bit of a kiss ass, and I really want the faculty to like me. 30 is overkill. I reckon I could get away with having like 15 or 16 pieces in there, but like, oh, how did that get in there? I have no idea. Oh, I, oh, I've miscounted. 30 is more than double the limit they gave me, so I'm gonna have to like really work on it because it's from what I remember unless they've changed it it's quite informal where they mostly talk to you and then talk to you as to like why you want to get in why you think you're a good fit if you've been a practicing artist beforehand because I'm not going through the usual stream which is like ATAR or um showing that you've done previous study I pretty much have to show them that if they give me the spot I'm actually interested enough in artwork to follow through with it one of my worries is, is that I've already gotten this spot before and I didn't follow through not because I wasn't interested but because I got pregnant with my second child uh anyway I'm going to the farmer's market I'll show you some of that I really like the farmer's markets I think you'll like them too oh and hopefully the Lions Club is open which is like a secondhand bookstore and they've got books at like a dollar or two so I'll take you there too but yeah, I guess I need to just reorganize this again because I have to make everything harder for myself. Anyway, love you bestie. Let me do a super quick sketchbook tour for you. Um, I'm not feeling this sketchbook at all. I don't know, I've been having a really weird time with sketchbooking. Actually, no, no, that's a lie. I like these pieces that I've done with my left hand. With my right hand, no, because I feel like it's too polished. My left hand I'm really liking. But I'm sure that at some point I'm going to get too comfortable with using my left hand and that's a good one. I mean, freak. It's fine, I'm not monetized. Anyway, I am going to the markets now. Bye!
harvest turnips and celery and cabbage. It is Sunday the 25th of June and I need to cull some of this portfolio. I need to keep only the creme de la creme of the pieces um, because after a film fat clip yesterday I went back and I looked through it and I thought no may maybe it's not that bad it is that bad but I didn't take any out I added more I added more pieces um, I think I'm just overcompensating because of how stressed and anxious I am. So let's keep it down. 12 artworks, maybe one or two sketchbooks. I don't think they'd mind too terribly. Like I said before, it's pretty informal. Um, I have a good relationship with some of the faculty. It should be fine. I'm definitely having this piece. So for anyone who follows me on Instagram, this was my Ramsey art prize piece. Um, I did not get in. And, you know, in hindsight, I really like this artwork, but I can see why I didn't get in. I saw the exhibition and the artworks there all said something. And this doesn't say what I wanted it to say, which was that artwork should be fun and childish and just free. And this doesn't say that enough. I'm going to join the art prize again, but I will definitely have to be more obvious with the meaning, I think. This is definitely, so this is one. Should I decorate the cardboard? Could. Okay, what do I have in here? I have one sketchbook, a lot of, a lot of finished paintings. But that's the other thing. As I was going through all these artworks and deciding what to put in, I realized that a lot of my artwork looks the same. Not just cohesive, but I am just redoing the same things over and over again. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to color as well to not show that I'm just doing the same things all over again. I'm definitely keeping this piece. This is one of my most recent ones and I really like the values and the um, textures I managed to get in this one. So this is definitely what I'm keeping. So that's two artworks. I'm really partial to this one, but I think I have enough sketches similar to this in my sketchbooks that I won't need it, so I might set that aside. I really also like this artwork, but I don't think I need it in my portfolio. In case I can't find anything else to put in, I will put it in the middle here. This one I really like. I think it's a fun piece. Um, it's also a collaborative piece. I did it with my two eldest children, and I think that's a way that I really want to work with and I want to show them. I think it's also a little bit experimental, a bit different from what they normally get. So I'd like to show this. I think it's also the kind of piece that will like help keep me in the memory. Because I mentioned that in the last clip, but I want to be memorable, like a good experience. And I think this would be good. It's like, oh, well, she's the artist who works with kids. 
this one I enjoyed making but I don't think it's a good piece like now that I look at it more I don't think it's that good a piece and I don't want to have any weak artworks in here so I will set you aside I've got one two three another collaborative piece but not as good as the last one so I don't I don't really need it do I let's see this one I like I like the um really textured lines I have and how haphazard it is and I really like the colors that usually you wouldn't think would go together because they're really fighting with each other and it works so I think I'll set that aside I had this in here because I thought it was different from the other works I do and yet at the same time it's not really it's not a strong piece I don't want any weak pieces in my portfolio I can see what I was going for with this artwork but at the same time it's you can't really see the figures from like far away you know plus it's got another one on the back so that counts too these are all the pieces I've done while I've been working on a picture book with someone over on Instagram. I have like a story highlight with all of the works and like you're working on them. I don't think I need all three. So I think I'd like to include one to show that I have indeed worked on a professional level. But I know I think this is the weakest out of the three because there's just not enough contrast happening. I like how these two are interacting and I like the composition. It really like draws you in to the globe. Um, but this one actually has a background. So should I show that I do backgrounds? Looking at it more, I think the colors on these characters turned out better. And I think the background will lend itself. So that's up to four now. This one, I had a little fun doing it, but I don't think it's actually a good piece. I'm gonna try speeding through this. I think this video is getting way too long. I did a poll over on Instagram and you guys said you'd rather like one long video, preparing the portfolio and doing the interview. But I think this video might be getting too long. I, I definitely don't want it to go over 40 minutes. So let's speed through this. Also not good, why did I put it in? Like I said, overcompensating because I'm just stressed over this. I still have more in here. My small pieces. Don't need this. I have something really similar in the sketchbook, so that's a no. This one. I actually still really like this one, so that goes in my maybe pile if I don't have stronger pieces. This one I thought would be good to add because it's like um very mixed media and I feel like it's very moody but I don't feel like it oh, on the one hand it does represent me as an artist maybe it's also a cat girl with a cigarette and do I want to show that to a fine art faculty board that's a no I feel like this is the type of stuff that an art school would really eat up it's sketches on location it's from Salbier house which is in Adelaide and it is the home of a prolific South Australian artist, um, deceased, but it's still working as an art space. There's exhibitions held there and residencies and art classes. So I think this is definitely good. I also like it as an artwork, so I will add that one. One, two, three, four, five. It's a maybe if I can't find anything else. Again, really like these, but I think I've got sketchbook pieces that are very similar to it. I don't need to add it. I like that it's on recycled paper. Oh, maybe that could lend itself to me, the fact that it's on recycled paper. No. I actually like this artwork. I don't know why I added it. it. I feel like I look like a monkey in this one. Like this does not look like me at all. This is the same thing, but larger as these ones uh, but I feel like it could work well actually uh, I really like this artwork this one's like a good indicator of indicator example of the type of artwork I like to make in my art style 
but it isn't the exact same as the other pieces I do, so I think I'll add this one as well. What am I up to? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have five more I can put in. This one is an on-location painting from Mother's Day at an apple orchard. We went to an apple orchard for this year's Mother's Day. It's a location I chose. I really wanted to paint it. I like how picture booky it is because it's also got like my son picking apples in it. So I think it shows that I can draw from life. So seven, eight. This is one of my favorite paintings. I did it during an art hang party live stream. It's a 10 minute piece, which it says down there. And I think that's worked in my favor of showing that I can capture sceneries and break them down into shapes and stuff very quickly. I think that could work in my favor. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Plus that one. So we've got space for three more. Why did I pack four sketchbooks? They are. What do I have here? Oh, I think this one's actually really cute, and I don't think I have anything similar. In I think this one shows that I'm really good with color and silhouette, so I'll add this one. Ten. Two more. Uh, I really like this painting, but I'm wondering, is it too similar to the artworks that I have here? In my peach Toba sketchbook like do i need more that look like that or would i be better off maybe having instead one of these you know what i'll add this one so that's 11. i have space for one more so i can either go with this one that i really like or one of these more experimental ones I think this one, while both are crude and both are more experimental, I feel like this one shows there's something, there's a little bit of oomph to this one, you know? This one just looks amateurish, whereas this one has a bit of oomph. 12. I really like how this one turned out. I feel like it's better than the ones I have in the sketchbook. I could just add 13. I think it's a hard and fast rule to add um, as to whether I'm as to how many you can have. I think it's a bit more relaxed. Okay, I'm just gonna sort these by size loosely. Just so it's a bit easier to go through. I like how I grabbed the A2 one just in case I didn't have enough space. Um, I I could have I would have been just fine with the A3 one. What do I have here? A little Oh, I see why I've packed this one, because this one has really nice life drawing pieces. This is my one week sketchbook. I think this one has the most variety in it, sketchbook wise. It also shows that I finished it in just one week. Um, don't know why I added this one. This isn't actually a very strong sketchbook. It's got a few pieces in it that are great. Like, I really like these two. These are some of my favorites. but. As a sketchbook, it's not actually particularly strong. All right. Okay, I have to choose between this one and this one. Actually, do I need the Peach Toper one? If I've shown other witchy type ones, do I really need this one? I feel like this one's large. It might actually be a bit distracting because I've also grown a lot since this sketchbook. Like, look at the difference between, let's see, these are end of December. Okay, so 2023. Can you see that? 2023 and, like, these are end of 2022. These are November. I'm wondering if I'm actually doing myself a bit of a disservice by adding this sketchbook. I think I'll decide that on the day of, so tomorrow. This one definitely. And this one. I like the sketches in this one, but I was also using it as a journal and I, you know what? I don't really want potential teachers to be reading my secrets. That's enough.
I'm gonna put it in and if I don't want it, I will take it out tomorrow just in case. But here is the completed portfolio. Anyway, I'll record some clips from tomorrow of me going to the interview and then I'll make a follow-up video telling you whether or not I got in. Hopefully I got in. If I didn't get in, um, I've got a clickbait title for you. Hi, Monday the 26th. It is the day of the interview. I've got 20 minutes to kill, so I thought I'd talk to you guys for a little bit. You know, how I'm feeling and everything. I feel really nervous <laughs> talking on camera in public. I'm just gonna pretend that I'm like FaceTiming someone. Um, anyway, I'm feeling nervous about the interview as well. I'm not sure what they'll be asking me other than like about I don't know, I guess my practice, what I do, why I want to study, stuff like that. Um, I'm hoping no sort of personal questions. Those make me weirdly anxious and I feel like I really need to overcompensate for my personality. And I need to justify why I haven't studied up until this point and why I've been a stay-at-home parent and stuff. Which I don't need to, but I always feel like I do. I don't have anything to talk about for 20 minutes. And there's an art gallery near here with like artwork from the graduates and the students and I can show you in there. I'll do that. I'll do that. They lied. The gallery is not open. There's a sign and they lied. There's an art store that's connected to the art school. I'm really hoping that it's open because it is starting to spittle lightly and I don't want my portfolio to get rained on, so I'm gonna go to see if it's open. Guess we only stepped out for a sec. That means I get to have footage without being embarrassed for, so I don't mind. today at 12 30. Sure, uh, Misha, yeah. Misha, right. yeah. Cool, I'm Genevieve. We've been emailing. Yeah, you. hi. Just had my interview and I think it went well. I think it went good. They seemed interested in what I had to say. Um, I think the thing I regret is telling them that I had started previous courses and I didn't finish them. I explained that it's because I was a full-time carer of my three kids. This background's really nice. I explained that I was a care of my three kids and that's why I couldn't finish it and that my kids are finally old enough to be able to focus on my studies. I'm hoping that doesn't <laughs> make my chances smaller but you know we'll see. They told me that they will be emailing me within a week to let me know whether or not I get in. Um, fingers crossed I do get in. Like cross your fingers and cross your toes for me. Cross them all. Cross it. Cross all of it. That's a truck. Cross your fingers. Cross your toes when I get in. I'm really hoping that I do. I... I want to study so bad, so bad, there's people behind me. But yeah, I will know within a week, but thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me in this portfolio journey, which by the way, they barely looked at. So that's nice, I guess. Um, I also got the head of sculpture and I had zero sculpture work. And he's like, oh, are you interested in sculpture? And it's like, a little. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vlog and hopefully there'll be many more to come and I do get accepted and I'll be able to show you what I do, my studies and everything. And more of this, more of this gorgeous campus because I love it. Um, but yeah, love you.